In this next segment, I'm meeting Delman Lee, President and Chief Technology Officer of Tall Apparel manufacturer in Hong Kong. And uh, we're talking about how the COVID crisis has impacted the manufacturing side and also the relationship between brands and manufacturers and how we together can build a more sustainable future. Hi, Delman. How are you? Hi, Eva. I'm fine, thank you. We have smiles on our faces right now, but definitely it's been a difficult year, right? The COVID-19 uh, crisis has affected um, all of our lives. Can you just tell me a little bit about how it has affected yours and and obviously also the business of Tall Apparel. So COVID caught, I think, many people uh, by surprise, including ourselves. Um, of course, personally, uh, I, I get to see my kids a lot more <laughs> than before, <laughs> where I used to travel. Now I, I have meetings at home and, and they have the class at home. So we both do our Zoom meetings and <laughs> we can all talk about it. I get that's the positive side of COVID. Um, but of course, uh, it, it hits the business uh, pretty bad. Um, our business is down. Um, the whole industry, I guess, is down um, uh, 20 to 40 percent, depending on, on which segment you are in. Um, so we have to make uh, a lot of quick changes. Do you think there's been any like important learnings? I mean, have there, has there been any best practices that you've sort of taken with you from this crisis? At the beginning, a lot of brands and retailers asked for delivery to be on time. <laughs> so, oh, you have COVID, you have COVID in, in, in um, at that time it's not called COVID. <laughs> you have a, a, something like a SARS in Asia, but please make sure you update us when could our delivery be. But very soon uh, after that, they said, actually, I don't need the delivery <laughs> because COVID is hitting the rest of the world. So we saw, we saw a sort of a pendulum swing in, in attitude um, towards the supply chain. And you, from, from please deliver uh, as quickly as you can to please stop delivery, <laughs> please stop production, and the whole forecast get, get, get uh, 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 reduced. So, so, so for me, the learning is sort of back to good, good old practice of no overproduction <laughs> or lean, having lean production principles and practice in place is, is quite important. For the crisis we've been through the past um, six, eight months, uh, definitely equal partnerships has been one of the big headlines for our industry. What's your take on that? Equal partnership, I think have many layers that we need to explain. The, the both words sound very good, equal partnership is very good words. Uh, but when you try to peel this concept up, um, th there are a few layers. The first layer is, of course, um, when you work with different size of companies, whether you're working with a big brand, small brands in the market, when it comes to sustainability issues, uh, we, the, the idea, the concept is we want to have um, equal in, co in consideration. That's what I call it. So if you're discussing a sustainability issue amongst big brands and small brands, it doesn't mean the, the, the opinion of a big brand means more than a small brand, right? Easy to understand. So, so when you're considering how to solve sustainability issues, whether you're a big company or small company, it should have equal voice. I think that that's the first layer of equal partnership. <clears throat> um, the second layer of equal partnership, I see that people always get confused is when you work on sustainability issues, um, upstream and downstream of the supply chain, brands and manufacturers and fabric mill. Um, this is where a lot of confusion comes. Uh, the, 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 the principle is that even when you work upstream and downstream, when you talk about sustainability issues and how to solve it, everyone in that supply chain similarly should have equal voice. The confusion comes is because in that supply chain, there are customers and there are uh, uh, suppliers. The whole sustainability um, uh, change would not happen unless the whole system, the whole business uh, changes. So it's a systemic change. And the systemic change doesn't happen just by one big player asking a supplier to please just do whatever I say. <laughs> it actually comes from um, every partner valuing uh, everyone working on different aspects of sustainability. So if a brand doesn't value the sustainability effort of a supplier, the supplier actually, from a business point of view, maybe don't want to work with the brands and, and vice versa. So for this systemic change to happen, 
to what I call the, the business flywheel to get it into momentum, everyone actually has to value the sustainability effort um, of every supply chain partner. And, and that is another aspect of equal partnership. That's a very long explanation. <laughs> <laughs> but a good one and an important one. So what do you think is actually needed in this relationship between the buyers and the manufacturers to accelerate sustainability? I guess uh, talk more about it, but more importantly is, is action. Action speaks louder than words. Um, and, in, and in many years that we've been working on sustainability through, through a, a few multi-stakeholder initiatives, we, f we find that a, a lot of um, leaders uh, want to lead the industry, but, but many times we find that they, they do it by themselves. And it sort of goes back to, to a saying, um, if you want to go fast, go alone. <laughs> but if you want to go far, go together. And I think we need to see a bit more of the latter. I've been seeing a lot of the former where maybe someone leads the industry by spearheading with their own initiative, but, but it really doesn't help the whole industry to change when, when actually the upstream suppliers get pretty confused when different brands and retailer ask them to do slightly different things. But at the end is, is for example, at the end is greenhouse gas reduction. Um, so I think more collective effort, um, more working together, uh, achieving the same goal would, would go a long way. How do you think we can create a continuous, prosperous business model, but do it within the planetary boundaries? I mean, basically decoupling growth in volume from value creation for businesses. Do you, do you see that happening? That's yes, once again, very good question. <laughs> so um, at the end, there are currently people maybe overproduce, aiming for a low price on the garment, but in effect, there are a lot of inefficiency in the supply chain. So from our business, our own inventory management, we know that roughly speaking, 30% uh, of the goods produced are at the end of the season for markdown. You sell less garment, less, not growth, <laughs> um, but it's profitable because you eliminate waste in the system. So currently there's a lot of waste in the system that somewhere, someone in the supply chain is eating that up, <laughs> is taking that uh, profit hit. But imagine a, a world where there's less overproduction, where garments last longer, um, you maybe do uh, quantity-wise, maybe less, less business, uh, but profit-wise, it's actually profitable. Um, and, and the second point is that currently, as you know, the, a lot of PL is based on tangible numbers, but there's a lot of externalities that are currently has not been priced into the products. So I keep telling uh, anyone actually, uh, if you want to win in this game, you need to start early to know that there is actually scarce, scarcity of resources uh, coming anytime soon. So you should uh, cater for it. Currently it's not priced into your product, but one day it would be. And once again, it's, uh, it's the same thing. It may be less products you make, but actually more profitable because material is going to cost you more. What makes you optimistic about what you're seeing, the things that are evolving or technologies or innovations or you know, movements happening in the industry? I guess I'm cautiously optimistic. <laughs> um, well, I hope there are a lot of attendees to CFS Plus <laughs> and other initiatives. I, I, we participate in a few, not too many, a couple to a few uh, multi-stakeholder initiatives. And it's always encouraging to see uh, more and more uh, uh, brands, retailers, manufacturers, fabric mills joining the multi-stakeholder initiatives. Um, this is at least a sign that the, the issue is gaining momentum, momentum and everyone wants, wants to work on it. Thank you so much for taking the time. And um, we'll see you online very soon.